Hey guys, welcome back to Hacksplain. I am super excited to have you back on board with me. And in this episode today, I'm going to show you something really essential. And this is Burb's crawling functionality, how to crawl a website and how to successfully create a sitemap. So let's jump straight into action right now. What you see over here is to the right, our already configured Burp Suite Community Edition with the Burp Listener set up as you've seen in our last video. On the left, as always, we are having our OWASP Chew Shop. Uh, the goal of today is to create a sitemap of the entire OWASP Chew Shop. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, so let's start by going to Ovo's Chew Shop and let's click on any item. Let's click on the Apple Chews. And what we see over here is that Burb already detected some action on our sitemap. And what we can do is right click on that item and say Add to Scope. So what this is doing, you can just click on yes for this question. And what you sh should see is that by now you have an item in your scope. And this basically tells Burb, hey, we are only dealing with this specific URL today. And I do not want to record anything else that your browser is sending to a different web server. So what are we going to do next? Now that we have our scope defined, we can switch over to dashboard. And what you see in here is that there is already a live passive crawl from proxy active, which is the standard configuration that Burp Suite Community Edition comes with. But for now, let's just delete that and click on yes. We want to delete that. So now you can create a new live task. And why I wanted to show you guys out there this live task mask is because what we see up here is that Burp Community Edition is unfortunately not supporting the automatic crawling functionality. But hey, Burp Suite comes for free and I'm quite happy with what it offers. So I'm not too sad about that. So what can we do next? Click on Live Passive Crawl and then go to the Tool Scope section and click on Proxy. And as we only want to create a sitemap of Ovo's Chew Shop, we can say, hey, let's use a custom scope. And now that we've already defined our scope item as seen before, we see our Hacksplain Chew Shop domain in here. So let's leave that as it is, scroll down to the bottom and there's not really anything left to do for us. So just click on OK. So the next step that we can do is we go back to the target tab. And I want to point this out one more time. As in the free community edition, the automatic crawling is not supported. This means that you have to manually click through all the items that the web application offers. And we're going to do exactly that right now. So in the target sitemap, you can see right now a pretty basic sitemap with not a lot of entries. You basically only see the one click that I've performed before by clicking on the Apple Choose in Ovis Choose Shop. And what I wanted to show you right now is let's move that window over here so that we have it side by side. What I want to show you right now is how this sitemap is going to get filled. So next up, let's click, for example, on the banana chews because I really like bananas and I want to see the information for the banana chews. And what I want you to do right now is look on the right side as our burp sitemap is getting filled. So let's close that for now. And let's, for example, click on the carrot juice. And you can see how the sitemap 
is gradually getting bigger and bigger. Let's for example click on the egg fruit juice and then there is another entry coming straight in. Okay, what else can we do on this web app? For example, we can change the language uh, and let's go to Bahasa Indonesia. Let's see what this is doing. So as soon as we click that, we see that there was a little folder added called assets. Let's expand this folder. Oop, and we see another entry. Let's try something else. Let's go to Espanol. Did we see any change? No, we did not see any change. But excitingly, we can already tell that as we go to all those different links, we see how the sitemap is populating. And so now you might want to ask yourself, what is this all for? Well, it is always good if you start with testing to get a good understanding of the web application that you have in front of you. And this is what we call the information gathering or reconnaissance process. And if you're done with that, you should have a pretty good idea of what the web app is offering to you. And if you activate the crawling functionality of Burp Suite Community right in the beginning, you should actually end up with a fully filled sitemap over here. And now, what up next? Once we have our sitemap populated, and I will drag this window up here, we can walk through all the individual URL paths and see what the website is offering to us in the sitemap tab. And there are a lot of interesting things in here. For example, we could say, hey, let's look if there are any interesting statuses. For example, if the response is showing us that, for example, a redirect has taken place. In this case right now, this is not the case, but we can scroll down and see if we find a redirect. Unfortunately, we haven't spotted one at this point. What else could we do? We could, for example, sort off the, the method and see if there is a post request in here which could potentially have any interesting parameters that you can manipulate in order to find a vulnerability. And there's a lot of other ideas that I'm going to show you in the future videos, but this should give you a grasp on what Burp sitemap is for, how useful it actually is, and how to populate it, how to get this list on the left with all the endpoints that the application offers. All right, this was all I had for you today. I am happy to join. Thank you as always for watching. Stay tuned and make sure to subscribe.